Hi everybody, welcome to Painting for Pleasure. I'm your host, Tony Visco, and we're going to end up doing the painting we're doing today is the painting that we did, or the drawing that we did last week. Um, now, I roughed it out on my watercolor paper, and I sent you off uh, this rough so that you can use it. But here we are and we've got a nice little design and basically from a design perspective again our the homes the huts at the Plymouth Plantation are in this area right here I've got a nice large tree over in this area fenced area down here my horizon line is about a third of the way up one two three roughly about a little less maybe a quarter to a third of the way up um, where the fence line is and the horizon is I've got a couple of people in the background over here um, so we're going to get just jump right in this and we're going to start off by doing the sky first. Now we are painting this. We did the drawing last week. The drawing um, that we did, if you remember, I'll just put it under here because I'm using this as my sketch. My sketch is my, my design. There's the drawing. Uh, and it's sort of mid-value, some darks, a lot of lights here and a lot of lights there, so it's relatively, it's a relatively mid-valued piece. Alright, so I'm going to use that as the base. It's going to be a mid-valued piece, light sky, light foreground, okay? And the white is going to be right over here in this, this building. Sun again is coming from this direction right here. So we'll put this up over here and I'll use that as my guide and uh, get started right now. Uh, and you'll notice I've roughed in some of my trees. Um, and, and, and what I did is I created these interesting shapes. So the light area of the sky is going to be one interesting negative shape that's up here. All of this over here. And we'll do this very light. And I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to go back to using my, I'll show it to you here if you remember correctly. That is the image that we were working from. I have it still here. So I'm going to do the sky pretty much. I'm going to do it light blue. I'll follow the guidelines of this. A little bit of green down here. And all of this stuff is going to be neutrals and mid-values inside. So let's just put that. I've got my sketch to work with. I've got my small uh, photograph to work with. I'll pick up my brush. And I'm going to start off by, by literally coming in here and saturating and soaking my brush in, with water and uh, I'm going to start off by painting the sky okay and I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to take water first I'm using a, this big mop brush this round mop brush that I have and I'm going to end up coming in here and I'm going to wet the sky with my round mop brush and I'm going to come right through the trees uh, around the chimney, around this, I'm actually going to come right around this building because I'm not, don't have to worry about it. And I'll wet the entire sky. And, uh, down probably, oh, down into this area right here now. Okay, so nice and wet. With the shadowed areas. And I'm going to pick up some cerulean blue. And I'm going to come in here. While this is saturated and wet, I'm going to use a wet cerulean blue, a lot of, lot of moisture on the brush. Take some pigment, mix it up. Actually, let me do this too. Hold on for a second, I'll show you what I'm doing. There you go, here's my palette. I'm mixing up cerulean blue. A lot of water, very watery. And I'm going to put this watery cerulean blue into my sky, my wet sky. That's a good way to do it, all right? There you go. And, and you notice that there were quick strokes. This is all wet over here. And I'm going to bring a, a, my little, little bit of yellow ochre along with this. And I'm going to come down with a little bit of yellow ochre underneath this and into this area here so so you'll see that the sky is going to go from this yellow to the blue all right so I'm moving in value I'm moving in color but keeping it pretty light okay nice and soft 
because now that's all watery. I've just basically got my entire sky in and what's going to end up happening here is, is that as this starts to dry it's going to get lighter. So the sky is literally going to receive back in terms of a nice dry light sky going from a warm color at the bottom up to a little bit of a cooler color, the cerulean blue at the top. Now cerulean blue in and of itself is not cool, but basically against the yellow it is. And I, instead of picking up a flat brush this time around, what I did is I just picked up a round brush. You don't need necessarily to paint always with a flat brush or always with round brushes. Uh, the choice is yours. Certain brushes do certain kinds of things. I'm actually going to use my round brush here a little bit more when, because I'm going to end up coming in over here and put some neutrals into this area, into the sky area, um, where my leaves are going to be. Understand? So what I'm actually doing right now is just coming in here and dabbing this a little bit here and there. And I just want to get get the feeling. Now you notice that I also I haven't uh, I haven't taped this down. I'm just letting it naturally uh, and let the natural gradation process take place between the warm and the cool color. Between and then as it's lighter down here, it gets it's a little darker up there uh, in the sky area. I may take just a hit more. Cerulean blue with a little bit of less water mix a little bit of cobalt blue with that uh, And let's say just for the sake of argument we're going to come down here with a little bit of a Some lighter just a little bit of darker blue in this area. So now you yes, I'm working at an angle You, you saw my brush come from upper right down to lower left. But remember, this is all wet. So this is not going to be a terribly busy sky once that's once the water um, allows the pigment that I just put down to slowly dissipate and softly there'll be a soft gradation of, of, uh, of my values over here to the values in here. So I shouldn't have anything more than the busyness of that sky right now. Just a gentle, gentle, let's say a gentle uh, busyness if there's anything that's busy at all but it's not not too terribly busy uh, I just it, it, as a matter of fact if, to show you what I'm get doing it I'm just taking a little bit of water on my brush and I'm using this dry brush and just feathering it by feathering it all I mean to do is that I'm taking the tip of this brush and just light I, it's wet took the water out of it with a little bit of tissue right and just Softly touching, softly touching the, the paper so that I'm just dragging this out a little bit just to soften it up so it doesn't look like it's too radically busy. Right? So that makes my sky. My sky is done. And I'm not going to touch the sky anymore because if the more you get into touching the sky, the less spontaneity you're going to have in the sky, the less. Uh, in, in if you more if you start to apply more pigment to this, it's going to get busier and busier, and it's just not going to uh, work toward the overall uh, dynamics of this whole painting once it's done. The sky is the sky. Paint it once, leave it alone. So let's go back into taking a look at what we really want to do here, and what we want to leave white or light, dry, and what we want to. Um, paint. So I'm having, I've got a mess, a massive tree right here and this is all going to be foliage but there's going to be some, there's going to be some areas in here where I'm going to be seeing through. All right, so I'm going to be seeing some holes here and there and I'm just dabbing this here and there just to, to dry it out a bit here. Now the next, we have the next stage and we have to determine what we really want to do with this. Um, we can put in our darks first or we can put on our mid values. And maybe the thing to do at this point in time is to do just, to take a smaller brush, 
Uh, we'll do my so we'll work with my uh, smaller flat brush. Well, actually, you know, let's do it this way. Let's take my one inch brush. Let's create the foliage a little bit here. Um, the foliage I want somewhat soft. So I'm going to come in here and pick up again. My foliage is going to go up in the, the leafy areas. So my foliage is going to come in here and I'm going to use some of the yellow ochre. And cerulean blue mixture. And I'm going to start to create mid value combination of yellow ochre adding some new gamboge to get get it a little bit more uh, olive green but but on the brighter side of the olive green and again this is water uh, a little less water a little less water and a little bit more pigment in this overall and We'll test that out and see what happens. I'm just going to put that spot down over there and we'll, we'll do something, a couple of sp spots here. All right. And, the, and the, the more watery it gets, um, the more it's going to spread. So if you put this into a dry area, it's not going to spread as much as if, if you put this into a watered area. Right. So, coming over here, and I'm actually adding a little bit of my Naples Yellow to this um, and softening that up a bit up there. Now, I've got lines, obviously, that you can see right there, but I'm not literally following those lines necessarily. Sun's again coming from this direction here, so the shadow's going to be on the left side, uh, and I'm just going to sort of quickly and softly now this is the, remember this paper is still wet it's right but I'm all I'm doing is I'm picking this stuff up this mixture of, of uh, new gamboge and cerulean blue and a little bit of yellow ochre over here on the light side and I'm I'm just basically feathering in some of this stuff that's over here and I'm doing it softly And now I'm going to actually come in here and do the same thing over here on this side as well. And I'm, if you if you notice what I'm bas basically doing is I'm I'm not I'm not pressing down hard here. All I'm doing is I'm just giving myself a little bit of tonal value in those areas. And I'm getting uh, the same thing over in this area here, but it's a little bit more uh, Naples yellow. And as long as this is wet, then uh, we should be in good shape. Because, because it's really not going to go too far. It's not going to spread too much. Now, I've got trees here, trees here, trees here. I've got a couple of trees over here that are going to be darker. And uh, let's not make them deciduous trees, uh, you know, uh, leaf, leaf bearing trees. Uh, we're going to end up changing that up a bit. I'm going to add some softness back here. Actually, going to come down into this area right here. And we got a the fence area. Going to add, I got a lot of green going on here, right? So, we're going to add some cerulean blue and cobalt blue together. And I'm going to come in here with a little bit of burnt sienna as well make this some of these this area a little browner okay um, and a little bit darker and again all I'm really doing I have a damp brush not a wet brush 
and pigment that's let me bring it over and I'll show you pigment that's just about like that right this is not a lot of pigment it tends to be watery not super watery but maybe 50 50 in terms of the amount of water and pigment and we're going to put this in where our shadow is on this side okay shadows on the left hand side remember okay shadow is going to be underneath here we're going to have spot shadow here and there so we'll put a couple of little things over there a little bit of shadow some shadow behind and some of the foliage that's going on in back we're going to try to keep this we're going to build this to a mid-valued piece All right, and make this lighter All right now I haven't done my branches yet you have a choice actually you can do the branches first the trunks first and then put this stuff in but this is going to give me a general overall feel for what I'm what I want to try to accomplish here I'm going to make my I'm going to take my a little bit of cobalt blue now and I'm going to mix in a little bit of opera and get a little bit of more of a violet -y color a little bit of red violet here and it's going to be and I'm taking it and I'm drying out the brush a bit and I'm going to spot that again here and there when I come down into the dark area this is all going to be dark over here we got some darks in this area here darks in this area here um, and we're going to actually come in here and I'm going to make this really dark but not right now you notice what I just did is I'm going from yellow, yellow, brown to this violet color right down in this area here. And that's because I want to keep movement. All right, we're moving from warm to cool, from light to dark. I got my fence area over here. And I'm working with my big brush uh, to do that. I'm just sort of looking. I've got darks here. I've got darks up here. Darks in the background. Ultimately, that's going to be all nice and dark. It's going to be dark under this area here. I'm going to probably darken some of this area up down in here. Looking at my sketch as I'm working at working off of my sketch. Maybe, maybe a little bit of dark up in this area right here. Probably down here too as well, because it looks like the sketch that I have has some heavier values down in this area here. And I'm just sort of working as if I'm going around my fence uh, area. I'll put a softer, lighter tone in there. So I've got, I'm starting to build, build my mid values. And what I'm going to do here is come down because this is this is my roof and my roof if i look at my photograph and my sketch these the roof is in shadow all right so let's let's put it in shadow we'll make my shadow i'm gonna make my shadow blue and fairly dark and with that blue, remember this is going to be dynamic too. So, uh, by dynamic I mean the painting is, the paint is going to be working constantly, and it's going to be getting a little bit lighter. So I'm not con too overly concerned about this being too dark right now. Um, but even if it is, it's blue. It's a it's 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 a nice value for shadow. Shadows tend to be on the blue side. Right? Same way within here. We got this nice blue that I'm going to put in here for my shadow as well. Now 
Now, here's the key. You can see what's happening. I'm going from green to green, reddish green, yellow, yellow red, yellow green, green into the green purple, purple blue, constantly changing. What I want to do is create my center of interest right here. That's that's going to be the most important area uh, for my center of interest. Is that strength of this real white, and I'm almost going to leave that the white of the paper, to what's happening over here. Now we're going to end up coming in here, and I'm going to start to look at what's happening back here. And what's happening back there is, is that that's fairly light. So let's... Let's do that. Let's make it light in terms of the yellow. And I'm going to use a smaller brush in here. And I'm going to start to come around this area here. We'll just come around these the fencing right now. And I actually am going around. I actually don't even need to go around there because I'm going to paint that all darker. Paint is all. I got. A, I got somebody over here standing. And uh, paint box. Somebody's paint box over here. Got a figure. It's right there. And we'll just come in here and sort of lightening all of this. I'm gonna just soften that up and change the colors up a little bit. Okay, and we're going to end up, what was that? I'm going to start to, uh, taking a little bit of, a little bit of water and, sp and spritzing this over here and in the hopes that that water will, will tend to degrade some of that color that's in there. It'll take a few minutes and perhaps maybe make what I've, I think will be leafy, a leafy looking pattern. Uh, just spray it. And I could do the same thing with, could do the same thing with this little spray. And you'll see some of it's going to turn lighter and we're hoping that that'll create that, uh, that effect of, of leaves on the tree without without me going in there and painting leaves on the tree okay so uh, as we start to let and this is slowly working it's slowly drying so we want to continue to work now um, and we're going to create this sort of roof, uh, roof line over here and again, we're dealing with shapes. And I'm going to darken that up. I'm going to darken a lot of this stuff. I'm going to come in over here. We're going to mix up some burnt sienna. Yellow ochre. We're going to make some real strong... Well, we're going to make some real strong branches right here. Let's start with the strength of yellow ochre. And the yellow ochre I'm going to work with is pretty much a lot of pigment and very little water on a thin, thin brush. So I'm coming in here, and I'll just see if I can pull this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. But we're just going to start to come down this way. All right, so I'm going to use my yellow ochre first to create this and then I'm going to end up putting some darks on top of that but that's uh, that's one and we've got that's a little bit on the wet side this might be still a little bit too wet here let's bring this down yeah, a little bit too wet but we'll make it work
Now I'm bringing in some burnt sienna. And I'm uh, just coming up into those trunk areas and starting to build this. And we're building this light to dark. Okay, so we just want to feel for where our branches are going to be. And have a branch there, probably a branch over here. Something up in this area here. So there's going to be a, it's going to be a tree with some branches over there, and that'll be darkened up a bit. Um, what we have down in this area here is we've got this fence, and the fence is going to go. The fence is going to be some of it's going to be light, and some of it's going to be dark. Now, let's say I put real dark fence over here. So I need to get behind this and uh, put some value behind here because we need to, we're going to darken some of this up and lighten some of this up. And basically what I'm really doing here is just putting in some tonal value. And I'll go over this with you in a second. but. Just want to build some value in here. And as we come down, which is, I'm actually putting in just shapes, um, not knowing really what goes on in the background underneath a lot of that stuff uh, so we can't really define what it is but what we can do is get, give you the illusion or the impression that there are things that are going on and what we'll do is build up the darks we're going to really build out those darks up so as an example let's just give you an we'll take and do this right now we have probably over here let's say we've got a window Right there. Now that's still a little bit on the soft side. Um, and we're going to have a, a little bit of a dark area underneath that peak of that uh, right there. And perhaps maybe over here we're going to end up with a darker area as we come down. Um, maybe a couple of darks here and here. And we've got, uh, again, that's soft. But we won't, don't want to need to worry too much about it. We're just going to put some darks in there. We'll make this all nice and even. Softly, we're going to allow this burnt sienna that I'm putting in here to play with the, the, the blue that I already put in. And you'll notice that it's sort of changing a little bit to a almost a blue red brown and allowing all of that to play together nicely this is going to play together nicely and I'll get a I'll get a, a gradation of pro, of these two pigments that, that I put in the br the blue which was the cerulean blue a little bit of cobalt blue uh, that mixture over there and that brown that I just put in uh, which is going to mean a lot when I when this painting is done it's going to really help to create a bit of, of, of interest and ambiance and there's a, there's a dynamic, these shapes will get, they're still dynamic, they're still moving. There's a lot of this stuff is all, all still uh, working together softly and, and eventually it's going to just not just blend and bleed together. It's just going to be a wonderful piece. Um, so, okay, so we're, as we move right along. Uh, and I don't want to move too fast, so we'll slow this down a bit. We have a bit of a shadow that is uh, underneath this eave uh, right here. Okay, a bit of a shadow that's under there. And I'm keeping this soft. And this is all going to be in shadow. And some of the fencing, let's say the fencing over here is going to be super dark. So let's mix a little bit of 
we'll mix a super dark. We'll mix we'll mix French ultramarine blue together with my burnt sienna and uh, come in here and we'll start to create a little bit too wet so we don't want to do that yet let's see how wet this is here I'm going to mix this up a bit adding a little bit of red uh, my red that I'm using is opera on this so it creates a lighter warmer area at the top okay and we're gonna go right to maybe pick up a little bit of yellow ochre in here and address some of these what I'm trying to do is mix it up a bit I'm gonna keep it nice and warm don't want to get it too put one in here probably one in, in right here it's strength um, and as I come over here, the wood is going to get, the fencing is going to get a little lighter. All right. A little warmer. And all I did here was just taking some clear water and drew out uh, the burnt sienna that I had right there and we'll, uh, we'll top this off with some nice bright strong there you go and let me look at my painting we want this uh, this tree here to be darker And I'm warming it up at the top using my burnt sienna and if we can what we're doing is what are we doing we're creating notice what I'm doing here just adding some of these twigs uh, not twigs but they're branches branches you know you get tr the tree trunk the limbs branches limbs twigs on trees and as I get light as I get smaller they're gonna get lighter but right now we're just sort of filling in some of this area with Um, warms and cools. A little darker, getting a little cooler as I come down. And uh, the coolness generally sometimes what ends up happening is just under here. Usually what ends up happening is underneath the canopy. So where it gets a little bit darker. Okay, and we want to change it up. I'm going to get a little bit redder there. What I'm actually doing is just changing. I'm going from one color to another, from warm color to cool color. Okay, because the, the one major thing that people tend to do when they forget about this is that they keep everything the same value. And if you keep everything the same value, it doesn't have the freshness and that, and that, that vibrance that uh, a painting could have um, 
if you change it up a bit. So uh, I'm going to come down here. We're just going to sort of do we'll darken this up down here. We got this. We're going to paint right around this box. Like what's happening? I don't like that. The way that tree is, we'll see. What we may have to do something with that. Um, okay. So, see what I'm doing is I'm just here. Let's just. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll just do another limb over here. Bring something over there. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe we'll bring one out here. Break it up, break it up a bit, okay? So it's slowly starting to build up as a painting. And look at what's happening just right here. All of this stuff is just sort of working on its own. And it's just sort of, as it dried, it slowly, softly, uh, there was a gradual gradation that was taking place between these, these values and these colors. And it, it creates a nice general feel all, all by itself. And uh, without me going in there, without me painting it. Okay, so we have to take a look at this, squint a little bit, say what, what, we, what do we want to do. This is going to be our area where this is going to be the darkest tree right here. And that tree is going to be super dark. Um, so let's get this. Let's see if we can get this even darker. I want a dark, what I want to do is I want a darker next to the lightest light. Okay, so what, what I'm doing is just, uh, just barely touching this stuff. Okay, and uh, I'm going to paint between my post. To give you the impression that this is uh, we're looking between these fence posts uh, to the trees beyond or this bush and tree area beyond it. Again, the darkest dark against the lightest light. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with this stuff over here. But I'm going to keep it warmer. On the shadow side, and like I said, generally what happens, shadows generally tend to be blue. But uh, you can use blue, blue-brown. And you want to mix it up so that some of this is light and some of it's dark. And it'll be darker on this side. Okay, so you can slowly see what's happening here. Um, and if I look at it, I've got some very interesting sort of stuff that's going on up here. You don't want to... Again, I want to keep it heavily, as much mid-value as possible, but let's go in and just, just make some leaves. Now, it's what happens is that on the... The real key here is the stuff on the outside 
this stuff here, for instance, is what really defines what kind of tree it is and so forth. So um, all the stuff in the center is not really going to make too much of a difference. But it's all of this this material that I'm putting in, this, the painting paints that I'm putting in on the outside, that's going to determine more what kind of trees that I'm putting in uh, that, I, that I will be putting in or um, how all the shapes. These, these create those interesting shapes, interesting movements. The, the interesting part is this, this real light to this dark. That's what I want you to keep, that's where I want you to, the strength of this. Uh, painting. Everything else is going to play secondary to this right here. So um, I'm going to come in here with a real fine, I'm going to actually come in, this is pretty much mid-value, light value, mid-value. I'll, I'll darken it just a hair more. Uh, let me take my, this brush and we'll mix it up a little bit more with my greens. So, and come in here and just soften some of this stuff up. Again, yellow ochre with my little little bit of new gamboge together with some blue, cerulean blue, cobalt blue. Um, and uh, and we'll take a look at this and we'll. You really should do big shapes first. All right, we're gonna create and we're gonna leave this tree here pretty light so the stuff, the tree behind it is gonna be a little darker. Well, normally I tell you guys to paint back here. Well, what I'm saying is normally I would tell you to hold the brush back here. And, and in this case here, you can you can sort of do that. If you're going to get real detailed, it's probably a little tougher to do. I'm moving my paper around so it's going to be a little tougher for you. But And remember that that uh, as much as I have uh, this painting as a mid-valued painting, there's still lights in it and darks. There's still lights and darks. I'm getting off the page here. Let me move this up a bit. Okay. All right. So if there's my tree, my light, my house, my homes, I'm going to start to get in a little bit more over here. We'll get a little bit more detail going on. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a great color. Um, so, lots of stuff going on in the background. We really don't need to define anything. A little yellow ochre here and there. It's a balancing act, people. Uh, so we know that this is yellow here. We know this is light here. We're going to end up sort of making some of this stuff underneath here a little darker. Okay, and we've got, again, a couple of people that are right there that I have to keep keep in mind. One here and one here. Okay, so let's move on. Continue to go with this thing and let me get my... Uh, gonna, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this whole section down here. I'll wash that in. But what I want to do before I even do that is to get, do my fencing a little bit more over here. So let's take, um, I'm going to take two brushes. I'm going to take this, this little round brush. Actually, you know what? 
Yeah, I'll take the little round brush, I guess. I was going to say, I'll work with... I got a little tiny flat brush here, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Just forgive me if you heard... I heard my lunch. It just came up a little bit in, in terms of a, a little burp. I don't... I apologize for that. Maybe I can... Make you not hear that when I enter this. We'll see. Okay, anyway. So if my fence over in this area here is going to be lighter, then I want some of that to be darker in the background. Okay. And what I'm doing is just putting in a little dark, some darker shapes. Don't know, really don't know what's going on back there, but we'll just create some shapes. Um, okay. Okay. So, fence, my fencing. Let's go back to a little bit of yellow ochre here. And let's determine that my fencing is going to be, maybe I'm going to have one here, one here, one here. And I'm doing this quickly, holding my brush down here. I could hold it back a little bit. but. Essentially, with very little water, a lot of pigment. Now I'm going to actually add a, add a little bit more water to this, and we'll come over here. And I'm um, uh, moving my brush rather quickly across a dry surface. And what I'm basically doing is leaving some highlights as I do that. So the brush is pretty much just a damp brush with, with, with more pigment on it than water. And if I just touch the paper a little bit, here, I'll give me an example right there. All right, just touch the paper a little bit. What happens is that it leaves a little highlight, skips. Okay, one, two, three, four, we'll just come in here and do that. Skips. So I can go back and get a little, little darker. Let's say my, my burnt sienna. And with the sun coming this way, maybe we're going to highlight this side of it. So we'll make this a little bit darker. And that side. Okay. Because the sun is going to play on this. Sun, what this helps is that the sun is going to end up creating its own interesting sort of patterns on this fence. And this is, we're not doing the fence necessarily accurately in terms of, in terms of drawing all of these pickets or, or posts, I guess, because they weren't pickets then. But what we are doing is just creating some interesting shapes to create the illusion dark of fencing and I'm doing sort of the stuff between the between the rungs, where you have this cross fencing going on over here, um, cross fencing there, 
Okay. So we've created this 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 pattern. Some of it's going to be light, some of it's going to be dark. But it's all basically posts and fences and so forth. And let's make uh, let's make this uh, person make this silhouette here. We got a couple of like I said, we got a couple of people that are up there. We'll put one here, so we'll just okay, and we'll make some. Person there. And we'll do the same thing with the person over here. Now I'm using real darks to do this with. Okay, a couple of people that is over there. How's that? A little couple of small people there. Okay, kind of cool. All right, we'll work it out. And um, let's, let's go back and we're going to start to get in. We're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to start to get into, uh, let me soften my, my brush up here and let, let the water soak in because I did... Like I always tell you guys, I, I tell you, what do I tell you? Wash out your brushes. <laughs> yeah, wash out your brushes or else you're going to get them all stiff. And uh, this is like a, a lot of paint build up in this brush. You have to wash that out. Okay, so let's take a look at what we want to do down here. I want to softly wet this whole area down here. So let's get a big brush. And we're just going to take clear water. And we want to wet all of this area here. There you go. All right. We'll just soak in it. We'll just saturate this all up. My foreground. And if my foreground is anything like this, this, this is all pretty light. So I'm going to just wash that in very, very, very wet. Right. And I'll let it go. Right. So we'll put some shadow in there in a bit, but basically this is light, that's light, this is going to be mid-value, and the darks are going to support all of that. Uh, so I'm going to just let that alone for now and just let it set up. We'll talk a little bit about this. So I got a couple of people up here painting near this tree. Uh, as strong as this tree is going to be, and it'll be strong, I still want you to focus in this area right here. So this is all pre-planned. You have to think in terms of where you want your audience to look when this painting is complete. That's so important because this is all the stuff that's going on in here is just secondary to the primary, which is right in this area here. That's where we really want you to look. These, even these little characters right here are going to be supporting characters. Uh, they're dark against the light, sure, but they're still supporting characters. Let's see if I can pop, soften that up a bit, a little bit there. And I'm going to end up 
taking some of this stuff out of here. Lighten this up here. Uh, and then I'm going to curve this down and curve this down over here so that that way it doesn't look flat. It looks like it's curved just like we have in our drawing. Um, so, other than the fact that this has got to set here for a bit, let me just let it dry and, uh, and then come back to you, okay? Hello, we're back. It's pretty dry, dry again, dry enough so that we can continue to work on this. Um, and I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at in my viewfinder here. What I don't like is this. I mean, I, this this is going up here to a point and coming down. So we're gonna we're gonna make that we're gonna change this up a little bit uh, as we come down here. That's what's nice about looking at it fresh. And uh, we'll add we're gonna add some lines, some some characters. I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna use my uh, rigger and and see what happens here. Let's take a piece of scrap paper. I got some scrap paper somewhere. Hold on. Uh, we'll get a piece of scrap paper. Yeah, right. So, is the idea is to just drag, I guess, sort of drag some th thin lines. And here, and we're going to add. So what we want to do is, uh, we we need a light line. Let's get some light pigment. A lot of water, light pigment on my brush. We want to. We sort of want right now a light line that's going to come across here. Okay, and we want a, some light lines that are going to come across there and maybe down okay and we're going to just to give it a little bit of a, a little bit of an interest we're going to just put a little bit of a chimney on a chimney i don't know maybe one here too i know it's not on the original but just a little something okay so let's come in here and we'll Start to look at some branches. Uh, a little dark here coming up. When I'm, you'll notice when I do these tree branches that they're they're done in short bursts. Twigs a little lighter as you come up to the top. Keep it light. See that? We want you to have, we want branches on here, but we don't want them necessarily super dark. All right. That's a little too dark way up there. And too thick, actually. Right-handed. So I'll probably change this. I'm gonna probably change it in order to do that. Give you an example, I might do something like this, all right? Upside down, a little bit of an angle. If, it, if it's uncomfortable for you one way, it, you know, there's, there's more than one way to do this, all right? So that the idea here is, and that's one of the reasons why I don't tape this down to my board, although I could clip this onto a, a, a board and move the whole board. That's not, that's not the issue, though. No. All right, so here we are. Again, you it's this stuff here that creates interest, this calligraphy, I guess is what if we call it, if nothing else. A right, little bit of little bit of interest here and there. A little darker here, a little darker there. Right. You want some some of it to be dark. Some of it to be light. Okay, and the sun's coming this way, so probably the inside of this is going to be 
more, a little bit darker. And you know what's, what, what else is interesting is that tree branches do not always come out the sides of the trees. They come out of the front of the tree as well, or the back of the tree. So um, you want to make sure that you consider that when doing this stuff. And follow the shadow. All right. Um, we have a nice and dark area here coming down into this box. Right. We'll do this over here. It's dark, but we don't want it to be dominant. And if it gets too dominant, we're going to have, we'll have an issue. This is window dressing. This is the kind of stuff that is important on a painting to help give it some character. Now I've gone to, I'm gonna, I just changed, notice what I just did is I just went from brown to brown blue. Took some of my, in this case, this is the uh, lavender that I carry around. And I'm just adding some of this to keep the branches lighter up here. Now, the reason for that is because you're seeing it through sunlight, so you don't want to see thick branches. You want to see thin twigs. That's so important. Um, you know, as these come out, you don't, again, branches are cool. I'll call it, you know, they're, they're heavier, they're generally they're thicker, but as you get up into the twigs, you want them to be a little bit thinner. Uh, they can change in terms of value, some light, some dark, but thin. All right, and these are just ways in which to make trees much, much more interesting, much more, much more effective, I guess, overall for your eye, for the eye to play in this stuff. And they can change up in color. You know, for instance, we can make this here, make it nice and bright and red. Go from that nice bright red to a brown. You just use a little bit of a little crimson in there. Um, and we'll make this a little bit darker down here. This, this branch that comes off here, we're going to bring forward this way here. And then uh, it will make it like it's sort of coming down broke, crooked, right, reaching out, as Neil Diamond said, touching somebody. Okay, anyway, let's not get into all that crap. Um, here too, the same way, you know, we got that dark coming up there. Uh, and as we get down here, we'll make it even darker. Okay. But you want to create these so that there's some interest in all of this. There's, you know, it, it just doesn't die on the vine. You've you got energy going here. Um, and that energy is so important. You know, we're going to, we'll do something like, I'll tell you what, we'll actually, you know what we'll do? Let's get some lavender down in that area. Create this. Make this tree a little bit more. All right. Okay. I don't know if that works. Let me see. Well, it could. Take some of it out, put some of it back in. I want some, want some of this to be a little bit darker. 
Okay, a little bit of light there, a little bit of reflection here and there. Um, okay, so what do we have over here? Same way with a tree over here. Let's get some real right under here, Eve. A little bit dark under there. We're going to end up having super dark over here. This in this window. And we'll put a little overhang there. Um, let's put some of those those little dark in there. Dark there. And um, look at my piece here. Let's just get this a little darker over here too. Okay, and we'll, we'll take a little bit of this cobalt, right, and some lines. Here you go, one there, one there. Okay, just enough, just enough to give it the impression, the, 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 the feeling. Same way with this here. Fix that a little bit more. Okay, continue with this stuff here. There you go. Um, this tree in here, we need a little bit more definition, a little bit darker area. Right. Um, this particular area right here, we have and that's right in this area here. We've got some stuff that's going on that we uh, we need to bring in. All right. I'm going to just let. Oops. Uh oh. Look what I did. Shucks. Where's my, where's my, oh my god. My mall stick when I need it. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Ruin a perfectly good painting by putting your hands in it. Hopefully that'll do it. Let me change that up a bit. Okay. Um, now fencing. A little bit darker here and there, so let me hold my mall stick right here too. And I have I have a brush. I think I have a brush. I'll use this one. And we will we'll get some dark. There he is. And let's just uh, All 
You know, we don't really know what the hell's... We have no idea what's going on back here. Don't care, really, too much. So, what we need to do here is we need to make, make, we need to make this fence, the fencing here darker than the light of the back, of the stuff in the background, or we need to make this uh, lighter. Um, so, I'm thinking, I'm thinking we just... We take and sort of darken some of this area back here a little bit more. Again, trace, and I need I need this actually to be I want this to be standing out a little bit more here. So I'm going to make this even darker back here. Um, one of the one of the things that we want to do is uh, give it give it a little bit darker, a little bit darker feeling behind this tree. I'll make that stand out a little bit more. Okay, so that, that bush comes forward a bit. And we can do the same thing with a bunch of this stuff. Now, Let's see if we can take care of and do this the way I want to do it. I'm going to put this paper over here. Back side of that. And I'm going to take a piece, another piece of scrap paper and do this. And let's see if we can take and make some leaves. And this is a splattering effect, I guess, huh? if nothing else. Create the illusion. They're going to come down here too, but it's, I'll live with that. Okay. Get rid of this. Get rid of that. Come up here. And if you're careful, just you gotta be you gotta be careful about how you handle this. Right? Because some of this stuff you want up here. Because those are trees. Same way with this. All I'm doing is just getting this is water. Let me create that cool illusion. All right, that'll do it. Um, okay. Okay. All right.
and it's that dragging. This dragging method here, there you go, and heavy, heavy. Okay, the only thing I'm going to do now to finish this up is we're going to take and we're going to create this a little bit of this, put some shadow in here. Um, and we don't really know where the shadow is coming from necessarily, but we want to create a little shadow here. And create some, a little bit of shadow in this area here. Just using some yellow ochre into the, doing that shadow. And maybe some spot shadows in here. I think that's not the correct make this a little bit I want this harmonious a little bit more. Okay. And there's my painting. <laughs> Soften this up a bit here. Should do it about like that. And maybe what we'll do is just uh, hint of a bird up here. Too wet, son of a gun. Now let's do that again. Too wet. One there, one there. Three birds. Anyway, that's uh, that's it. We're about done. We we'll let this sit. We've got enough going on over here so that it works. This will all sort of soften out over time, and you'll see that. And I'll uh, I'll send you this soft pretty soon. So, well, thank you for being with me, and uh, let's stay together as much as possible because this has been uh, it's been a pleasure for me to work with you this way, and I'd like to uh, like to continue it until we can get back into teaching live and maybe we'll just continue this as we go forward because some of you have expressed a tremendous amount of interest in doing this kind of class on a regular basis so uh, I'm happy to uh, accommodate and work with you guys any way you want. Uh, Tony Disco and I teach at the Plummet Center for the Arts. I know you guys are all my students but this is going to go out to probably more than my students. Um, my website, www.panthonyvisco.com. Uh, and I am on Facebook, so you can like me on Facebook. You can email me at theartdude. Uh, Till til next time, see you later. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Paint well. Painting for pleasure.